and welcome to A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Miller. This is Mark Schein. Mark, we're getting to that time in the basketball season where league races mean something, and we've got some to talk about today. Well, we're middle of January, so you see a lot of big games on Friday night and some interesting games on Saturday, too. Well, let's review some of the great games that we had last weekend. You've got Columbus Grove and LCC. Yeah, the Thunderbirds and the Bulldogs matched up last week. This was at Columbus Grove. Both of these teams started the season 0-3. Got a little bit of a roll here lately. Reese Roney will score 20. Grothaus with 17 and five threes. The Thunderbirds, as usual, led by Thomas Williams with 23. Mark Janowski with 11. Biggs Johnson had seven points and some big free throws late. And LCC wins over Columbus Grove, 55-53. Crestview, 40. Delphus Jefferson, 39. Jefferson had a comeback in the fourth quarter, fell just a point short. Jay Stockwell for Jefferson, 12 points, eight rebounds, three assists. He does everything for them. Saturday night, they lost a tough one to Wayne Trace, a very good team, 71-42. They're now 4-8 overall. Crestview, led by Javen Etzler, 14 points, eight rebounds, and Drew Klein. Those names just keep coming back. 13 points, three steals. They won a very close one Saturday night at Arlington, 44-43, and they are now 7-3, 3-0 in the Northwest Conference. You know, Crest, you're trying to play for a league championship. Sometimes you got to win a game like that right That's there. Right. You know, just kind of win ugly and find a way to win one. Let's go to Elida and Wapak. And as early, game, uh, early in the game, it was ugly for Elida. They went their first nine possessions without being able to score. However, matching that Wapak in their first 10 possessions, they put 18 points on the board and did so in typical Wapak fashion. They had seven players score in the game, six of them between five and 10 points. Great balance down there for Doug Davis's team. Elida makes a run in the fourth quarter. They had 19 points through three quarters. They put 22 on the board in the fourth quarter, but Wapak made 10 out of 13 free throws once they got to the one and one and double bonus, and Wapak wins the basketball game. They go to 11 and one and three and zero in the WBL. Free throws are important. Free throws are stretch. important, yes sir. Let's take a look at Shawnee. Van Wert, another overtime game. We've had a bunch of them this year. 51 all in regulation. They win 64-57, outscoring Van Wert 13-6 in overtime. Nate Place had 21 for Van Wert. Nick Gutierrez had 13. Saturday night, Van Wert came back and got a really nice win, beating Marion Local 65-59. They are now 6-5, 1-2 in the league. For Shawnee, led again by Sean McDonald. 21 points. Ray Manley also had a nice night. 16 points, 6 rebounds, 5 steals. Mark, you remember when people were saying, you know, when you get St. Mary's on your schedule or you get Van Wert on your schedule, you get Kenton on your schedule, it's kind of an easy W? Not, Not anymore. anymore. Those yeah. three teams are all making great improvements. So let's go to St. Henry and Anna, a non-league game that was played uh, at Anna. Uh, St. Henry comes on in a two-game winning streak. Anna was on a three-game losing streak. And what happens? Well, Tyler Starman has 14, including a three. Ryan Lutmer has 10, including a couple threes. And they win the basketball game over Anna, 51-50. Why? They made 12 out of 16 free throws. Anna was just 5 of 12 with the free throw line, and St. Henry gets a one-point win. Let's look at a Saturday night ball game. Delphi St. John, 60. Shawnee, 47. Already talked a little bit about Shawnee, but Sean McDonald led him again, along with Zane Wilkerson. They both had 11, and 11 points. Shawnee now stands at 8-4 after the whole weekend was over. Delphi St. John's, they had 14 threes that they made on Friday, only three on Saturday. Amazing what a night yeah, will do to your right. shooting eye. So anyway, they struggling from the outside. Both teams are. What happens? Six foot eight. Tim Krieger takes over. Dominates the inside. 23 points, nine rebounds. He shot 11 of 16. Jared Wurst also kicked in with 16 points. DSJ now 7-3, and three, having a nice year. They really are. All right, let's take a look at our bright spot. And yeah. Mark, you've got something uh, that deals with academics. Well, this actually came out on the uh, 17th this week, and that involves the Wapak Kaneta football team. Now, we know they were 9-2, and two, had a great regular season, tried champions in the Western Buckeye League, but they were also named first team academic all Ohio as a football team. And what they do with that is they take 22 lettermen, and they take the GPA of those 22 lettermen, and they submit it to the OHSAA, or I should say Ohio High School Football Coaches Association. And there you see right there, there's their certificate for being academic all Ohio. And we like it when teams do well on the football field, but even more so when they succeed academically. Yep, that's awesome. That's the uh, student athlete that's what's part of that deal, supposed right? Supposed to be, yep. Hey, one of the guys, a high school student that works on our show, he's back in the booth right now, Ben Phipps. We showed you a picture of him and his family at Christmas time. He had a write-up in the newspaper. We want to recognize Ben. But you know what, Ben? I think you forgot something. You listed a lot of things. You're a very busy guy, director of the night, of, uh, Friday Night Sports Report. That's good. 
Spanish club, Lima sister cities, Olympic weightlifting, fly fishing, hunting, playing Magic the Gathering, playing vintage video games, works the booth at the school, plays in the auditorium. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Ooh, he forgot us. Who, who began his career? He began his career at WOSN WTOW with us, and he... Gee, ben never, forgot never all about us. You got something else. That's typical. All right. <laughs> well, one thing we want to bring up, and we got this with Jerry Snodgrass when he was on air with us a couple weeks ago. This Friday night is honoring military night, and they would like everybody who hosts the game, plus all the visiting schools, to do something to honor the American military people and what they've done. And we will hope your school is doing that as well. I know we got some things on Twitter about some different things people are doing. And, letting military veterans in free and all those types of things. That's a great thing. Find some way for your school to honor our military veterans this week. I hope Ben's not mad at us. Ben, we love Are we still on the air? Oh, he punches a button up there. We're talking to nobody. That's right. <laughs> hey, where are they at now segment this week? We've got somebody we want to, that you'll recognize, and, and we want to talk about him. He was a, a class of 1970 from Lima Senior High School. Went to Defiance College after, yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go, Mark Schein, class I know where of 70. This is going. Defiance College, Yellow Jackets, he was there from 70 to 74, and I looked it up, Mark, you played on some really good, oh, yeah. oh look at that, you're up high, baby, of course it's taken no, from no, the no, floor, no, no, so that, it looks that's like That's one you're of high. my teammates is up high, I'm that little guy oh, down, I'm you're down crouching. crouching down there, yeah. Who's your Buckeye champs two years, district yeah. NAIA champs two more years, national qualifiers, I gotta ask you about this. Did your 71-72 team average 95 points 95 points a game. And you know, you see the left wow. of the picture there. Coach Holmberger on the left. Hey, you know the picture on the right? The coach is Ray Etzler. He was an assistant great coach there for as well. Yeah, well, and, Ray, and then, of course, yeah. a great coach over at Crestview. Yeah. But Coach Holmberger did one of the most amazing things. My freshman year, we walked the ball up the score, won about 15 games. He realized... I got nine guys that can play. He threw out his philosophy. It was run and shoot. Wow. It was press full court, and we averaged 95 points a right. game. Scored 132 one game. All right, yeah. back to you, back to you. All right, all right. 80 and 20 is four years at Defiance. In 2009, they put him in the Hall of Fame up there. That's awesome. Then he started yeah. a coaching career after he played, ended up as the head coach of the Bellevue Redmond through 1986, and then moved back home. Ended up at Bath High School. There he is. Come on, referee, what's <laughs> up with that call? Man, those are some old photographs. Bath there. Wildcats from 87 to 2000, and then since 2001, he's been with WTLW, WOSN, doing basketball. There he is, basketball and football games and about everything else around here, culminating with his gig on a closer look with a much, much younger and maybe more handsome Mark, but nonetheless, <laughs> you're here. Hey, he does a lot of other stuff, too. Uh, Volleyball, basketball official. He's a District 8 FCA board member. And right there, he's there even go. a Continental Alumni <laughs> cheerleader. There he is in the back row. Uh, Take a look at the lady's eyes next to you. She's saying, uh-oh, what is going on? Nobody else has yeah, any and, clue what's okay, going on. Okay, that's Kevin Holmeyer, who was the coach then. That's his sister <laughs> going, what in the world is he yeah. doing Well, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. His wife, Claudia, daughter, Amanda, and, and son-in-law, Dan, another daughter, Elizabeth, and son-in-law, Nathan, and four grandsons that I know are the complete and total apple of your eye. And uh, the proudest thing I can say, my partner. Yeah. It's been fun. That, may, that really is, has. Where are yeah. they now? He's here. He's that's here. That's where he's at now. All right, he's, that's good. Hey, plays of the week. We got some backdoor cuts, and it's all yours. It's too embarrassing to do anything now after <laughs> doing that. Well, thank you. That was very nice, you guys. Well, what we want to do is we want to look at the backdoor cut. And I think it's kind of become a little bit passe with the dribble drive motion offense that so many people run. Finley is just outstanding at this, and we got some clips that are going to show that right now. And first of all, Kyle Nunn had a great basketball game. This was against OG last week. But watch the passing window right here. Hapner's going to throw the basketball right here. And the passing window is so small and got it in there for that backdoor cut. Here's part of what makes it succeed as well. And this is that great pass that's going to go from the wing inside. If we can try to get this going here again and make it work properly. Here's the cut going to go right here, backdoor cut, and... Layup inside. Let's try this again, Mark. Let's try that. Here's a cut inside. Nope, it's not going to work. Let's just make it go. Okay, so once again, we're going to do it at a different time. This is going to be a pass that goes from baseline inside. Here's the cut back door again by Kyle Nunn. Baseline cut. He's going to get guarded heavily in the corner. You've got to guard him out there because he can score so much. And when you do that, here's the back door cut. Perfectly timed and a great pass that comes from Ryan Roth. We're going to look at one more sequence here of this. And this time, his man is out here kind of helping in the trap situation. So he's going to go back door. What happens? The post defender has to come over and help. 
and watch how he just pulls up and nails the jumper over him. And once again, we'll see the same situation. Post defender has to help. Instead of going all the way to the rim, he nails the jump shot. We had Kyle Nunn the other night. They had a great game from Finley against OG. That, those backdoor cuts were a part of it, and nobody yep. does it better than Coach Rookie's yep. teams. Did it all night long. Yep. All right, thanks for that. Yep. Hey, let's look at some of the games we got coming up this weekend. I got the first one. Versailles, they are 12-1, 4-0 in the league. Their only loss is to Dayton Dunbar, and they are at Fort Recovery. 9-1, 3-0 in the league. Two undefeated teams in the MAC Conference. Their only loss is to Jay County in overtime. Versailles, Friday they beat Marion Local. 66-55 on Monday, just last night, they beat Tri-Village. Of course, Justin Arns, he's the man. He's the guy you got to stop. He's been scoring at over 20 a game very, very regularly. Fort Recovery, good team as well. Friday, they beat New Bremen easily. Saturday, they beat uh, Monroe, or Franklin Monroe again very easily. An interesting thing that I don't know the answer to, but I did not see Caleb Martin in the box score. Yeah. I wonder if he's healthy. Sick, whatever it was, did not play or maybe just did not score. That would surprise me because he's been playing well all yep. year long. That's going to be a great MAC matchup. It is. Let's look at where a game where you and I will be at in the SCAL on a Friday night, and that is Jackson Center and Rushi played at the Habitat of the Cat, one of my favorite names for a <laughs> facility around. Um, Rushi is 11 and 2. They're 6 and 1 in the conference. They have a win over Fort Laramie, and they are tied with Fort Laramie in the conference race right now. And of course, they play each other twice in that conference. They play them later on at Fort Laramie again. Uh, Jackson Center, 7 and 3. They're 3 and 3 in conference play. You look at what happens with uh, Jackson Center in the games that they have lost. They've given up 46 points a game. They lost three, points, three games in a row. They're now on a three game win streak, however, and in those three games, they've given up just 24 points a game on average over the three game win streak. Rushi prefers a much faster up tempo pace. They average about 55 and a half points a game. So we'll see who gets to pace the way they want it down at Jackson Center. I'm looking forward to that yep. one. WBL matchup, Shawnee, 8-4, 2-1 in the league. They are at OG, 11-1. They just had that one loss last week. Finley got them. Mark and I were there. They are 3-0 in the league. Shawnee, as stated earlier, they split last weekend. Their leading rebounder, Tyler Moore, got hurt on Friday, did not play on Saturday. He is very important to that team. The next night after this game, they play at Wayne Trace, so they've got a tough weekend. OG beat Salina last Friday, and then... We saw the Finley thing just a little while ago. Jake Kaufman was in foul trouble the whole game against Finley. Did not score much, but Jake Dybel stepped up and had 17. And they've got a tough one on Saturday. They go to, to Lima Senior. Speaking of which, that Saturday matchup, OG at Lima Senior will be there. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Lima Senior lost last Friday to Whitmer, 63-54. They've lost three in a row. This Friday, they're at Oregon Clay. Hopefully, we'll right the ship and come home and play OG. Tuesday, after that, they play LCC. Of course, Jar Ward is the main guy that scores for them. He's having a nice year. Yeah, scores, rebounds, defends. Jar Ward's having a really nice year. And after the big game that OG has on Friday, be interested to see how they come yeah. back on yeah. Saturday night. Let's move on to a PCL matchup between Ottoville, the Big Greener, 7-5. They're 1-1. One in PCL play, they lost to Spencerville on Monday night. Uh, Miller City, their matchup with uh, Miller City, seven and three, three and zero. Oh. You're running out of time if you want to beat Miller City in the end, uh, in the PCL. Uh, they won three in a row they, before they lost to Lincoln View by two on Saturday night. Consistent scoring from Jacob and Mark Kuhlman. Uh, but no auto nails a three ball for him. But you're looking ahead to the PCL. This may be the last best chance for somebody to get Miller City because after that, they have games left with Fort Jennings and a game at Clyde at Columbus Grove. They'll be favored in those games. Ottoville needs a win this week. They're coming off a couple losses. They've been giving up a lot of points in the games they've lost recently. Three losses in a row, 62.3 points per game, giving up defensively. Got to get going because they were giving up just 41 and a half points defensively in a five game win streak before that. It's all defense for Todd Turnwell's team this week. Well, you've got a scoring machine to talk about next. Perry. Yeah, how about that? Perry, scoring machine. Boy, they have really been putting up points. You know, they lost those three games over the Christmas break to WBL schools. Mm -hmm. Those WBL schools, Shawnee, Wapak, and Van Wert, are a combined 25-10 and 10 right now, obviously in Division II competition as well. Since that time, Perry's 4-0 in the month of January. They've scored 86 points per game and given up less than 42 a game in that win streak. They have Allen East this week. Allen East has a big game with Spencerville on Friday night. Um, they started out 5-1. and one. They're 1-3 one and three since that time because they've been giving up some points. They've given up 60 game defensively. Miller averages 22 with .3. Spencer 
uh, Smelser, excuse me, 13.4. Foster's been injured for them, hasn't played. That's a key part of their game. He had 38 for them the first couple games, hasn't played lately. Hopefully they would be able to get him back. But when we talk about the four people averaging double figures for Perry and going against a team that struggles some defensively, could be a tough game this week for Allen East. All right. Let's take a look at the games we got coming your way on our broadcast schedule. A lot of them coming. A lot of them uh, that mean a lot. Some big games this weekend. It'll be the same way all the way through the end of the season. Hey, thanks for joining us on A Closer Look. We'll do it again next week. See you then.